So welcome back to the show, Rebel Buddha here, and today we have a radical guest, my friend Stuart Fott. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Always, uh, always a pleasure, man. Thank you. So yeah. I've known Stuart since I was like maybe uh, 14 or 15 years old growing up at the skate park, and I'd always love to play him skate because he was really good at flip tricks, <laughs> and he was even sponsored by ATM at one point in time. The flipping of the board. Yeah, we've had a couple of good sessions at, at Borchard. That's probably the only place we've skated, right? <laughs> Actually, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. So if it wasn't for Borchard, I wouldn't have owned a skateboard for the last, like, 20 years, I'm sure. So, anyways. Is that the only place that you go? <laughs> I've literally only skated Borchard for the last <laughs> 20 to zero years. That's insane. I skated, I went to, uh, you know, Ryan Leach, a.k.a. Tron. Yeah. Um, he got me... He got me uh, to go skate the courthouse, and you know we jumped up and down recently, semi recently, yeah. Okay. And we jumped up and down the stage, and it was a uh, it was a good time. But yeah, you went up the, the stage, so I jumped up the stage. Just an ollie. Not. Just a just boosted a little ollie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys skate there? You guys probably skated that a lot. Like, I back in the day. when I went there, I would look at the stage, and I didn't understand how people went up the thing. Yeah, I didn't understand how you could, how you could go fakie up it or something or nolly. It didn't even make sense. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, before it got crazy, like chipped out. That was a fun. That was a fun. Did you go like, back there in the day, like in the nineties? Oh yeah, that was like uh, the weekend spot. So we we skated that a lot. Yeah, like pre Borchard skate park era. Pre Borchard before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So before Borchard, before the actual skate park, we would just skate the big three uh, at Borchard, and then we would skate NPI, and then on the weekend, we would hit up like the courthouse and like any other spot that we could try to find from the girl videos, you know. So that was it. There was, board, there was ledges, the two ledges at Newberry High with the really rounded that sucked. Yes. And then the big three, and then did you ever like go explore like LA besides yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. LA, the valley, we... Yeah, we, we hit uh, every spot we could, but mainly, like, the courthouse. I was, like, the go-to. And you ever yeah. see, like, all the dudes there? Like, all the girl and chocolate guys? Um, I'm trying to think. I definitely, yeah. Actually, RIP Gabriel Rodriguez. So, I met him one time, and he hooked me and my friends up with some, some like, gear. Gave us some trucks, gave us some, uh, some, some shoes, and actually, he was with, uh, one of my favorite skaters of all time, Joey Surreal. Do you remember that guy? City Stars. City Stars. Switch tail slides, I ride, word the herd. Is, is that is that the rap? I think that video? was the rap. I think you just, yeah, you just nailed it. Okay. Um, yeah, so he was one of my favorite, actually, skaters of all time. Really? And he was with Gabe, uh, Gabriel Rodriguez that day and, and then Fabian Almar. So, yeah, that wow. kind of stands out as a good memory. That's a different time. It is a different time, man. That's a... Uh, we're talking late 90s. Late 90s. And so you were, how did you get sponsored by ATM? Um, let's see. So I was skating for, for Val Surf. Okay. Like ever since I was 10 years old. Me too. You as yeah. well? Yeah, awesome. Pretty much. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you knew this, I used to work there. That was in probably the before your time. Yeah. Okay. I worked there too, but in 2003. Different eras. Yes. But I like this. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Skated for Val um, when I was like little guy. Um, got flowed by a couple of different board brands through the years. Would kind of like I do now. I would like pause the skate thing, go BMX for like two years, and not even skate not at skate. all. Not even. Touch. Did you even think about it or even like want to? Um, no, I go through like just highs and lows of of the skate thing. Okay. Yeah, highs and lows. Understandable. So, yeah, yeah. So, but through the years, I kind of had like different like board flow companies and always like wrote for, for Val. And then, um, I think at one point, like we were filming with, uh, you know, Steve Ireland, mm -hmm. AKA Mesh. I don't know if you knew that was his nickname, his street name oh, back okay. in the day. Um, so yeah, we fil filmed a ton with him and, and he was actually really great about filming us. And then he would make these videos and then I think I sent off a bunch of copies and, um, ATM was like one of the companies that gave me the... Gave me the green you sent them out to everywhere. I probably sent like twenty or thirty out, and uh, all on VC, VC, v, VHS, VHS, VHS. With and you made it with a VCR like 
like that or he already had a computer so i i believe and like fortunately i had a guy like steve to like knock out the task for me right but um yeah i think he was going like like v you know vhs to vhs pause and go and whatever and he edited it and then we made like 20 copies we sent it off in the bubble wrap and with a little letter attached and nice that Age was 15. That was the model. <laughs> that was the model. Right? And, and uh, yeah, little did we know, we were actually not too far from like the mecca of skating, LA. But at the time, it seemed like everyone was so far away. We might it well... seemed like a whole different yeah, country. Totally. Yeah, yeah, being in the suburbs, you're like, and you wanted to be there so bad. Did you have those feelings? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was like the dream. Yeah. So, and it seemed like so unobtainable because at the time, it wasn't like, you know, a few years ago where it's like there's tons of people sponsored everywhere and this guy's you know it wasn't like that it wasn't at all yeah. there was no one yeah there was like one person in every town who was maybe getting a board yeah. or something so it was like uh jim bates was was doing his thing you know jb i think he was getting some like birdhouse um like flow or he was on birdhouse for a minute right um and then uh yeah there just wasn't much going on so, so he like was older than you? He's older than you? Yeah. For like a, a few yeah, years? Yeah, he's like, I think he's like probably four years older than me. Okay. And yeah. he was always like sponsored, it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah. Like pretty, his entire life, he always I, had some sponsor. As long as I can remember. Yeah. Right. Something. Rightfully weird. so. The man <laughs> is a sponsored boarder. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He sure is. He, I see him like, like pushing like through on like Somis Road sometimes. Like randomly I'll be driving and like. The boonies, and he'll just mm -hmm. be like pushing with the hood on, and like, you'll have a sighting. Wow, the, the nollie flip, the, the the tray flip, yeah, the, the backside flip, just the the routine. Everything's perfect. Like it's yeah. twenty years ago. Still, it's really amazing. Yeah, the guy truly can time warp, and I and I, <laughs> and I respect that. Yeah. In fact, um, I was randomly skating in the park like a month ago. JB was, uh, you know, he's jumping down the the bank. Yeah, doing as usual. Doing, you know, going through it, I'm firing off the, the go-tos, and I was like, Jim, I'm going to need to request a one foot. I need an aggressive one foot right I've now. I've never seen him do that before. I, I hadn't either, but I knew he had it in him, obviously. Okay. And he hit me with it, and it was solid. He did it first he, try. First try. Just one foot the bank. No biggie. Like, I don't know how old he is. 40-something. Yeah. Like, boom. No biggie. So, I, I don't that's think JB I for you. I've ever done an Ollie North in my life. Really? Have you ever done that? Uh, yeah. I mean, in the early days, it's like it was all about uh, slicing up the grip tape. Did you know this? No. So I don't the, know about this. So on the front of the board, okay, okay, we're talking early 90s here, like early Stuart Bott skate guy, um, you'd actually take a knife and slice off the top part of the grip okay. on the nose to facilitate the one foot. And so we would, yeah, we'd that was get aggressive. Thing. That was the thing. The only person I really seen do it was like Tom Penny and uh, Jamie Thomas would do them. Yeah, and that's it, really. Yeah, one foot, one foot tails. If you want to get real okay, aggressive with it, that. get a little jump ramp, like one foot, and then grab the tail. See, I was always afraid that I would roll my ankle. Uh, that's that's probably a solid concern. I never like factored that in, but I was yeah, like, I don't know thinking. if I want to do that trick. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, know. yeah. But then later on, instead of one foots, everyone could just do really good kick flips with their leg extended. So the mm -hmm. one foot kind of like yeah. fell away. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it became like overnight. It seemed like all the the tricks I'd learned when I was a kid, they like all of a sudden were not, you did not do them. So no pressure flips, right. no one foots, uh, no impossible. That um, came back. Are you time, familiar though. with the lawn mowers? With the front foot impossible thing? Front foot impossible. I could never do that. You could do it? Yeah, so that's all stuff that um, I had unlocked at like age like 11 or 12 or whatever the year was. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did you do the, the flamingo <laughs> trick thing where it wraps around your calf? You know what no. Mean? No. 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 I, yeah, I never went there. Never you know, there's there. only like, I guess, yeah, I guess I couldn't do those tricks. So there's a few tricks I haven't done. Yeah, I had, I had for some reason, I had no idea you worked at Val. When, when did you start skating? I started skating in 1998. I was okay. like 10, so 21 years ago, or no, longer, something like okay. that. But I don't yeah. I don't even want to skate at all anymore. You're done? Yeah, I'm done. And it really? feels so good. Okay. Yeah. Just like you don't own a board anymore. I don't even have a skateboard. Okay. Yeah. Not even taking a breather? No, I just don't want to do it. 
Okay, so what, why? Why? <laughs> because, because I really feel like I did every trick I ever wanted to do. Yeah. I filmed every trick I ever wanted to get on film. Documented it, yeah. I learned how to dark slide, front side and back side. Okay. Nollie flip That's it, an aggressive nollie seal maneuver. It. Okay, I learned that like <laughs> a couple years ago. I had to learn the dark slide. Okay. And that was like the hot thing for a second when like Jim Greco was doing them a lot. Okay, yeah. Then, so I learned them. Yeah. Um, I got to skate with Mark Gonzalez, Jason Lee, Guy Mariano, everyone I've ever dreamed that the, I've ever wanted to skate all with. All the lords. Eric yeah. Austin, yeah. Carol, anyone I've ever, literally every single person, like, Phelps. You, like you game slapped him. We were you all friends. Had a couple like I got I to gotta give him some fist pounds, you know, like. Right. Um, and I feel like that chapter of my life closed when I was like. 23 mm. or so and then and then I'm in my yoga teacher career and I'm really busy and it's just something that I, I like sometimes I'll be laying in a yoga pose yeah and I'll be thinking about it I'm like I'm so happy <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to jump down any stairs yes yeah uh, that's how I feel I about could it. I couldn't imagine being one of like you know being like a like a guy at the end of his skate career like Still, kind of having to do it for a paycheck or whatever. And it's like, it, can, it doesn't seem fun. Ah, uh, I feel a nightmare. It I mean, I horrible. never, I actually never wanted to even like beyond just like getting free product to support my skate hobby. Yeah, I never wanted to to like, be pro. No. So you never. So so that's exactly what I want to talk about. So yeah, most kids like they're like I need to be not even say most, but there's like a yeah. handful of people who are like so hungry especially like brazilian people and stuff they're like hmm. need pro like they yeah. like need it to like satisfy some inner craving but yeah. you didn't have that craving no i never i never did like in fact that was uh that didn't seem appealing at all to me like at all like just the just the thought of like okay i'm gonna go on you know get super sweaty from spot to obscure spot. I'm going to get in a van with a bunch of random guys and we're going to like never called my name, okay. you know? And there wasn't like, like back in the day when I was a kid and I guess, you know, nowadays maybe there's money in it or whatever. I don't, who knows if there is now or was five years ago, right. wherever it's at now. Um, yeah, it wasn't like that back in the day. So I never really looked at it like, Oh, this is awesome. This could like help me like achieve my, my financial goals and like this is radical. Yeah. So it was always just like a hobby for me and it was uh it was my second love. My first love was martial arts. Oh really? I didn't know. I don't know, know if you knew that. I didn't know you practiced martial arts. Yeah. What so, do you practice? So I had a, a black belt in Tung Sudo and then another one in Kempo. And so when I was like a kid, like seven to eight or sorry, seven to like ten, eleven. Yeah. I was like five hours in the karate studio guy. Okay. And that was kind of like my, my, um, I don't know what you can call Your it. training. But yeah. It was kind of like my, um, my like athletic base that I took to skating, which I think helped a ton with skating. Oh, of course. You know? Um, so yeah, I loved martial arts and then kind of got burnt out of that and then, um, got into skating and just like loved it. And, and then you didn't do martial arts at all anymore. Totally done with it. I was kind of like where you're at with it's, skating. It's like, cool. Did it? Like, did what I wanted to do. Like, that was my first job. Like, I was a little ten. You were a martial arts instructor. Yeah, that was my first gig. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're. It's kind of like funny a to think black about. Belt, like, yeah, it's like, like walking around this. Like, <laughs> walk around the studio, like <laughs> teaching private lessons for like back in the day, like twenty bucks every half hour to like, other back little in kids. The day. Yeah, to their little kids. No yeah, way. Yeah, their parents would. uh would would book it with me and, and like, you're like hey, i'll pencil you in for saturday and you're 10 years old yeah yeah that's the strangest thing it was it should be like odd. that doesn't sound like legal yeah it doesn't sound legal or looking back it's like even weirder but, that's really uh, funny you're like time, entrepreneur super you're like an entrepreneur black belt yeah it was a it was actually at the time like a good gig man i, I had like all of uh, my nintendo games that I ever wanted or can dream of from that karate cash so that was the first job <laughs> That was my first, yeah, that was my first job. Wow. Yeah. That's a really great first job. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Actually. I went to Roger Lacombe Karate in Agora. And we I battled. Managed, those um, were the other guys. Those were the bad guys? Those were the other guys, yeah. Okay. We would see them uh, at the, the local tournaments. But yeah, in Agora, right? Or yeah, 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 yeah. 
I made it to purple belt. Purple belt? Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, let's get you back in there. I don't want to hurt not. anyone. Yeah. Okay. You're, <laughs> you're totally zen down. I don't want to hurt I, anyone. I respect that. Martial arts is cool though. I mean, I love Bruce Lee and I love like training and I yeah. love watching martial arts movies to keep me inspired to like keep up my training. Yeah. Because they are so badass. Yeah. I mean, I love Jet Li and, and Jackie Chan and all them. They're really great. I hear you. But why'd you, you, and then you never look back about the martial arts? No, I kind of got burnt out, never looked back, got into skating, and that kind of consumed me until, you know, like, was done with high school, and, you know, and, and then. So then what was the plan? Like, you were, you're, you're on ATM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they ever take you on trips or anything? Yeah, I did, did a couple trips, and like, a bunch of great guys, but again, not like. I'm you like, didn't vibe with it. I'm like, okay, yeah, nah, I'm not trying to go down this path um, because you because you were you saw long term yeah and most yeah. skaters are just so in the moment they're like i want it now and you saw your future yeah it wasn't for me or you just and you had really good parents i'm assuming too parents are great yeah always had good you know like relationship and guidance from them but yeah it was just something that i don't know it just never really called my name as far as like pursuing it and uh yeah i had like a handful of sponsors i was like um dc flow i like a handful of guy venture you were a venture guy too right no i never got i never got really trucks okay um but uh but yeah i i decided to like pack pack my bags i ended up moving to brazil and uh quit the sponsors i did the the whole mission thing for my church so mm -hmm. it was just like i mean talk about like a zen moment just like no worldly crap like that was kind of like my buddha did you have like a top, like a suit and tie? We were in the whole black. Yeah, suit yeah, thing? the white, the, the white shirt and tie. We we cruised around the streets. Um, I I was called to go to Brazil. Okay. So you stay there for two years. You fully like you know immerse into the culture. Did you learn Portuguese? Learned Portuguese fluently. Still. Yeah. No yeah, way. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, I can still speak it. I don't get a chance a lot to to speak it because there's not too many Brazilians out here, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, learned learned Portuguese like fluently and did that for a couple years and then. So how is that like being like a SoCal kid and just having, enjoying California and then you're like, okay, yeah. here you go. Let's send you to Brazil. Was it yeah. more something like you're like, I want to do this or was it something totally. like it was like an honor? Totally. Yeah. It was, it was one of those things where it's not, it wasn't like, I want to do this. I want to cr dump my hot girlfriend and go to, you know, you had a third world country. You had a break up with? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. So I had all had all, had all this, this the stuff going on and and uh, it just always felt like for me the right thing to do and it was kind of like a, a like a personal goal of mine like okay I want to go on a mission you know well don't they you know that you have to do this like since you're a kid right yeah it's Being... a it's a total uh, so it's a total like voluntary thing there's definitely like oh you don't have to go no oh I no. thought every every Mormon person has to do it no 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 okay. it's a it's it's like a total voluntary thing I've got tons of friends that have and didn't do it and you and know. it's not frowned upon really uh I mean maybe some people that are like stupid you know might frown upon someone that doesn't go but for the most part no okay like so like they're super orthodox or whatever yeah okay you know I can see definitely people being judgy but. Um, no, it's not like a commandment or requirement or anything like that. Okay. There it is. Still going. Cool. So then you went to Brazil yeah. and you had, and you learned a lot about the world. Like, was that the first time you left the States? Yeah, that was the first, first time out of the country and it was crazy, man. Have you ever been down to Brazil? I haven't been to Brazil, but I've been to Peru. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, third, like... Third world country is just like, it's a different thing. And we weren't like in the little nice parts, you know. You weren't in like Rio. No, no. I was in a place called Belo Horizonte. And it's, uh, you know, I was in different parts of, of that. And some, you know, some areas were like super urban, like downtown LA, living in a skyscraper. And then some parts were like super country, like literally dirt roads, like, you know, and like dirt floors. And they just drop you off at, and then you're like, they're like, go, or you're yeah. like with other kids. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you're like, you've got like your, um, your geographic, they call it a mission. So you've got like your mission and then you've got like, I don't know, I think there's like three or 400 like, you know, guys. So there's that many people 
at like a yeah at a mission yeah, yeah. and they yeah. do all your laundry for you and stuff like that um no we most of them like most of the time we just hire like a, a native to do the laundry for like pennies on the dollar okay so then they come and pick up your clothes awesome. and do it yeah interesting yeah and they at the time they didn't have any like washing machines either we're talking like so this is pretty much you pretty much lived in like india conditions for like yeah. two years for the most part yeah okay. which was a crazy experience because when i come back it's like oh my gosh totally different mindset for life like i understand what's out there and like why people come to Here, our country yeah. like, right people that like bitch about our country like nine times out of ten i'm guessing they have never left left and especially haven't lived you know so um yeah i came back especially to where we live like such a nice area i think know. it's the nicest area in the entire world <sighs> strong agreement you know <laughs> I think it's, that's, I think that's why it's true it's yeah i mean think about it like we're stone store from la we've got you can go to Coast, malibu got the breezes but i mean it's like it's awesome so yeah i love where we live and like just having that perspective of the third world country i think like it's really me. important it for me. every teenager to, to go to a third world country on their own totally agree man to see that it's not just hollywood yeah and like the illusions <laughs> of the world i mean this is just one big illusion i mean you remember kids like back in the day like you know it's probably are you agora or oak park i forget i'm oak park oak park guy. same thing though yeah it's like you know kids from you know np would be like i can't wait to have them get out of this town man this place sucks and it's like then of course they quickly realize like no it's actually very desirable and it's the best part in the country actually well, it, when you're As a kid, when you're a kid, I remember feeling so stuck here or something. Like the feeling was, like I want to go to LA, like so bad. I don't know why, but like you want to go to like I wish I was in Venice or Santa Monica or LA. LA. And then like you yeah. go there with all your friends, drive there every single day. Yeah. And then now that I don't have to go there, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have to go there. Yeah. To, or today, I mean, yesterday yeah. I did for work, but okay, for teaching yoga, but yeah, yeah, I try to avoid the entire West Side. You do. It's like I'm not trying to go there. What about if you had like a, a big project? I mean, I'll I'll go, but it's just like try to avoid it. You know what I mean? I, I but, totally uh, understand. It's that's almost yeah. like um, there's like a border at like Lost Virginness. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole yeah. other world. This is the fun zone from like, yeah, I would, I would agree. Lost Virginis. To Wendy. <laughs> to Wendy. Yeah, that's it. And, like, and everyone everyone gets it that lives here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, total, totally agree. So, like, say you're, like, working somewhere and you come back over the hill into Calabasas. You go, like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah, every time I'm like, <laughs> oh, thank goodness I'm home. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I absolutely get it. So, yeah. I, I love living around here. I never thought that I would like end up buying a house in Thousand Oaks or mm -hmm. this area. I always thought I would yeah. move. Like as like when I was a kid, I thought I'd live in New York City or like LA or something. But yeah. I'm like, no, yeah, not at all. Fun to visit. You know, like Fun I, to like visit. we were talking about. I was in New York last week for like a little conference thing, and it. I love going. I try to go every year, but it's like, yeah, I love love living here. Yeah, because there's something so. that makes me relaxed. Yeah, it's it's peaceful. Exactly. It's very peaceful. But then you need to get your balance of urbanness every once in a while. You do. It's fun to get out there and switch it up. Yeah. So but, uh, so after Brazil, you were there for two years. Yeah. And then you came back and you were like 21 or 20? Came back, yeah, 21. Yep. And then you're like, now what? Kind of fresh start? Yeah, had my now what moment. And then uh, had a bunch of friends um, that were going to school out in Utah. And so I kind of like, I was just like, all right, I was never like an academic guy. I actually don't really believe in like traditional education. You know, I don't buy into the whole like, if you're going to be successful in life, you have to have a piece of paper that says that you know your social studies. Oh, you right. Know? Totally. Like I just, I, I never, I wasn't raised that way. I don't like buy into it. So academics were never really my thing. I think in high school, I probably average like d minus d plus c minus type of vibe. just getting by me too just getting vibe it's just like let me walk down the freaking graduation a little way and get it done um but yeah so anyways ended up like going to utah did the school thing um kind of was a little bit more serious about grades and uh 
you know, just like did that and went to University of Utah and, you know, had a fun time up there, but no skating at all. You didn't yeah. skate, touch your yeah. board. No, no skating. Just I, focused. I, yeah, I'd, I had a board back in Newbury Park, and that's probably when when you kind of, those years probably when you, you were, were in your twenties. Yeah, when I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So that was probably when you were doing your thing. I was like skate rat guy, and I would come back into town every now and then and skate. I remember I'd see you. I'm like, how do you? I'd be like one of those kids. Be like, how do you not skate when you're not when you're not yeah, all you, year round. Yeah, you didn't get. Like, I didn't understand that. How do you not? How do you live without this? <laughs> You're only yeah. like a several percent <laughs> skater, not a hundred percent. Yes. Skater. Yeah. Part yeah. extreme, part time. Yeah. Very, very part time. But I, I like it that way because it's like, even when you're relearning the most simple tricks, it's still like super fun. It makes it more magical. It makes it more magical for sure. So then, what were you studying at yeah. in Utah? Um. So that was like. Uh, kind of a, an unfortunate thing because I never really found a major that I was into and so I just ended up doing communications which is totally stupid Communi- I always get like so confused dumb, when people say that dumb major I only chose it because I saw like the path to graduation as a shorter path um, but ended up being super boring and uh, yeah do not recommend it so when people say that I'm, like, <laughs> I'm into communications I go what do you mean you text people yeah like, it's like it a, it's, it's just like a generic degree it's like the piece of paper you know okay so it doesn't yeah. help you doing pr work or anything like that no not really no not like the the handful of courses that i took i think there's like an actual pr route which maybe does but yeah what i was doing now so then so you so. finish school like you're like 25 or something yeah like 25 and yeah you, like 25 26 and yeah. you come back to california Mm-hmm. And then you're just working for someone or yeah, so I actually stayed out there um, Yeah, so I was out there for like a handful of like 10 years in Utah. Okay. Yeah. How old are you right now? Um, 38. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was out there for a long time and you know um, Ended up like like I always thought I was gonna do the real estate thing like okay. I thought I was gonna be like like not selling houses, but I thought I was gonna go on like a Donald Trump mission, where I'm like buying buildings and all this stuff. Just I'm like flipping. I'm like this commercial is commercial real estate. Yeah, commercial real estate guy. I'm like this is my path. Yeah. And um, so I ended up like graduating like two two thousand eight ish, and um, like the housing market, as you probably know, was like done really bad. Yeah. And so it was just like terrible timing to get into real estate, and so <clears throat> so I was like, shoot, I got to make money, like what should I do? You know? And, um, and I had a neighbor that was working at a dental software company, totally random, but it was like 2008. No one was making money doing anything. And, uh, he seemed to be making good money. So I was like, Hey, so-and-so like, like, give me a job, man. Like, so this is during the recession. Like you obviously everyone's, you're seeing everyone lose their job. And then this guy's still crushing it. Yeah. This guy seemed to be doing like super well. And And ended up, like, getting a job at his company. And he made it sound like the most amazing thing ever. And maybe for him it was. But for me it was an absolute nightmare. Just boring? Just, like, just boring. Um, They had me coming in at, like, super early in the morning. It was just, like, you ever see the movie, like, Office Space? Oh, yeah, Red Stapler? That vibe. Okay. Yeah, that type of vibe. I'm, like, finding myself in a cubicle, super depressing... People is the opposite of your the rebel Buddha headquarters right here. Okay, okay. it was like no inspiration. Just white walls. <laughs> white walls and cubicles, man. Early in the morning, dark shadows everywhere. It was is bad. Um, <clears throat> so I did that for a couple years, and I was just like, man, I got to do my own thing. That was always my dream. So my dream wasn't to be a pro skateboarder. It was always to be an entrepreneur. So you've always had that mentality. Always, mm-hmm. yeah. Got it from my dad. My dad was like um, self employed, and what is he the years. Do? So he's in real estate. He was a realtor. Okay, so oh, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so, but he was always, like, teaching me those principles, and I, you know, definitely got it from him. Rich so. dad, poor dad vibes. Yeah, and uh, and so I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I was like, man, okay, I, I got to figure something out. Like, it's time. And so I heard, started heard, hearing about um, the term... <clears throat> Got cut out. Yeah, let's make let's make sure. Uh, sorry. Let's see where it started at. Oopsies, this sucks. Oh no. 
cut off a while ago. At 23 minutes. Hmm. Let's see where we talk about. Darn it. We could even just put it as a podcast on this if we really needed to with just no audio, <laughs> but... Oh, no, like, camera? Yeah, but... Yeah, that's fine. But let's just see where we're at. Cool. We could just have a, a black spot in the middle. I like that. Yeah, it could be abstract. I like that. Because Rebel Buddha doesn't have to yeah, be perfect. Yeah, there's, dude, there's no rules. There's no rules. We'll just have the black section. Yes. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. <laughs> All right. Actually, that actually works. Okay. Okay. We'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> so where were we? I oh, yeah. I, so entrepreneur. I figured, yeah. Yeah. So the job. Hated it. Working for the man. Totally depressing. Had to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, started looking around for opportunities. I started hearing uh, the term SEO. SEO. Are you familiar with the term? No, I don't know. Yeah. So it means search engine optimization. So online marketing. So if you have a business popping up high on Google, if someone does a search. Okay, so like the click click stuff. Yeah. Started hearing about that and I was like, man, this is kind of like a cool thing. This seemed like magical to me at the time, you know. So what year is this? So this is like 2009. Okay, so this is before like e-commerce went yeah. to the roof. Yeah, so okay. this is like right before that whole thing went off. And so I was like, huh, this is kind of cool. I wonder if I can maybe start like a company and help people with their online marketing doing SEO coming up high on Google and so I uh, while I was still working the depressing job I just like I was like screw it I just started my company while you were working at the other job yeah while I was working okay. at the other job and I just went around, I took off like a week and I went around to like different dental offices and got like a handful of donuts and would just go pass out donuts and talk to different dental offices and convince them that they should work with me and pay me $300 a month just, you just, you went for it. Cold, went for cold it. calls. Yeah, cold calls. Just go for it. And um, sure enough, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like 30 or 40 like clients. They're all paying me like 300 bucks a month. Like this is... It already? That yeah. happened in like a month? I got, I went pretty aggressive with it. And yeah. you were shameless. Yeah, just go in and go in and not, you know... You already had the name and everything set up and all... All I had was business cards. So I didn't have a website, I didn't have anything. I just had a... Uh, like yeah kind of a little sketchy business card and uh -huh. no website but I, I had met like a guy that um, you know that claimed oh I'm an I'm an SEO expert so you go get the clients and I'll do it and we'll split them split the revenue okay so I'm like okay great I go and run and get a bunch of clients and then uh, hand them all off to this guy and I'm I'm billing and I'm you know I'm paying him half and it's like it replaced my income and it was great but eventually all of them canceled because this other guy really really sucked at doing what he said he was awesome at doing. Okay, so you had a con man. Yeah, yeah. So he just, yeah, he just kind of sucked. But he was your friend, or you just met him? He was just a, just a random guy I was connected with. Okay. And um, but I that kind of like got my wheels turning. I was like, you know, I I, I can actually do something here and support myself. This is kind of cool. I like this. Were you were you kind of pissed off, or you were you you were sparked? I was kind of, I was sparked. Okay. Yeah, I was sparked and it wasn't easy like getting going or anything because I didn't have like any mentors, like anyone listening. It's like, that's the most important thing. And there get was it. no YouTube people get talking it. about this stuff yet. Yeah. Or anything like this. There really wasn't. Okay. And so I was kind of just out throwing mud on the wall and like some stuff was sticking and I was just stoked to be like working for myself. You know, that was, that was the dream. And so I did that for a couple of years and then, um, that quickly sort of became like a saturated thing. So all of my dental clients would be like, yeah, we're having like 500 people a day call us and they want to do our SEO. And so I'm like, I got to do something else. Okay. To kind so of stand out. It just like, everyone caught on to it right yeah, away. Yeah, okay. yeah, totally. It was one of those things. And so I, I, I realized like, okay, what's really helping these guys is you know, getting people from the internet into their dental practices was their positive reviews. And so I kind of had my light bulb moment and I was like reading tons of books, like, uh, you know, Think and Grow Rich and just like really mm -hmm. going for Straight it. Book. Yeah. I was like really just going for it, trying to like make this thing work and figure stuff out. Yes. And, um, 
and I was like, you know what, that, that's, that's my path. Like, I'm going to help people. I wonder if they'll pay me to help them get online reviews. And um, that was a new concept at the time. And so I started a company called Sweet 300. And our whole thing was like, okay, if you have a business, we want to help you get 300 reviews on Google. Go. And uh, so I went around and signed up like a few thousand like dental practices and did driving that. in or cold, like driving in and introducing yourself in the office or cold calling mostly. Like what was your yeah, strategy? Yeah, so face to face. Okay. So I would cruise around. I got really comfortable and kind of like figured out how to get past the mad at the world uh, front desk lady. Yeah. Usually her name was Pam or Barb, okay. which is weird. <laughs> but um, really made, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So okay. it was either Pam or Barb. Uh huh. And I got really good at like getting past them to the, the actual. What would you do, boss? So I would uh, I would cruise in and I would say, I wouldn't say, hey, my name's Stuart, this is my company. I'd say, hey, um, I was just looking to drop a card with the office manager if he or she's here. And then normally they'd be like, yeah, that's me. And I'd be like, oh, cool, here you go. And then um, also was looking to uh, just like leave some treats for the office, wondering how many people are working so I know how much to grab. Just, random. yeah. Like you're giving free promo. Yeah. Way. Okay. And then at that point, they'd kind of be a little less defensive. And they would be, they would say like, oh, oh, okay, well, that's, that, that's kind of nice, easy enough. Um, yeah, there's one, two, three, four. And then I would say, cool, four total, or is it five with the doctor? In other words, is the freaking boss man here, yeah. or am I wasting my time, you know? And uh, they'd say, oh, yeah, five with the doctor. Cool. So I know the guy I want to talk to is there. I would go out to my car, put five donuts in, go back, and say, here you, you go. You already have the donuts ready. Yeah. Okay. And here you go. And then um, I wouldn't say anything. And then I always wait for them to say, okay, um, what do you Why do? are you here? Yeah, yeah. who are you, by the way? Yeah. Oh, I'm Stuart. I help doctors get reviews. Um, was uh, just hoping to introduce myself to Dr. So-and-so. Is it cool if I just hang out and catch them between patients? So you, then, were, you had no fear, no fear of rejection? No. no. It's so important. That's like the number yeah. one thing. Yeah. And how many times, like one out of 10, did it work? Yeah. So like 15, go into 15 offices uh -huh. and I would talk to five uh, decision makers and then usually uh, one or two of them would sign on with me. So you were getting like a 10%, maybe 8% sign yeah. on rate. Yeah. Which is pretty good. Yeah. And then, you know, once I do that for a little while, then all of a sudden my schedule is, is totally Filled and I'm not passing out donuts anymore. I'm just going to my appointments. Okay. So how long did you do that for? Yeah. So I did that for a long time. I mean, I did years? that years. Yeah. <clears throat> years. And then, um, kept my operation like super lean and, you know, didn't have an office. I actually created software with, uh, uh, like software guys down in Costa Rica. And, um, and then basically I would go sign the clients and then I had an office person that would help me like do all the stuff. And then we'd use a bunch of different software tools to automate and run the business. So you only have one employee? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, so did that for a long time. And then about a year ago, I had an opportunity to sell that company. And so sold it, walked so, away from it. So sweet 300 is gone. Yeah. So it's gone. Okay. Yeah. So that's gone. Um, and then launched my new brand praise um about like six months ago so praise is the yeah. same thing as sweet 300 except it's a new fresh start yeah so so very similar we we help businesses get reviews online um however with my old company it was mainly doctor focused okay and then with praise really my new push is to work with marketing agencies so <clears throat> so i'm trying to partner with pretty much every single uh, person that does marketing in the world because I want them to sell praise to their clients. So for every single company, so you're trying to be like a new Yelp in a way. No. So like if, if you were a marketing company, you would help your clients, like you would do their web marketing, you would do their website, their logo. We want praise our software to be like part of your offer. So you can also say, Hey clients, by the way, I noticed you don't have any reviews on Google. Okay. Um, well, we can help you do that with our software. We're partners with Praise, and um, you know, this will send a text and an email out to all of your clients after they have interaction with your business. So, like for you and your yoga. Right. After each yoga class, each 
um, student would receive a text message, hey, thanks so much, like leave us a review. Right. You know, and it just fits. So it goes off. through like what all their paperwork that they received, they put in all their emails, all their contacts into mm -hmm. this database. Yeah, so they would have an account on our website Praise, okay, and they'd be able to log in, and then you know every time that you had interaction with the customer, they would receive a text and an email. And how much does that cost every month? So I charge businesses two hundred bucks a month, and then I charge our agency partners like five hundred bucks a month, and then I give them twenty licenses of the software. So if you had a marketing agency, you'd pay Praise five hundred bucks a month, and then you'd take your twenty licenses and then sell each one of your 20 customers for $200 a month. Okay. And so you would make 2000 and you'd pay us 500. 500. Wow. So how many, you, you're growing pretty strong right now. Yeah. So, so far so good. We're, you know, um, I mean, signing on a lot of marketing agencies, especially like just yesterday we brought on like four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's really, uh, what's it called? Uh, just, um, you can make money while you sleep. Yes, I'm. I'm way into uh, recurring revenue. Yeah. Recurring revenue. Yeah. So just the same clients over and over and over again. Totally. Yeah. I'm. I'm super into um, like anything business wise where I can set someone up on a software and bill them on a monthly basis and let the software kind of do what it does and it adds value to that person and then they're. It's so great that they're willing to pay me on a monthly basis. And the program actually works really well. It actually works really well, yeah. So the people that have been using the program, their businesses have doubled, or what's like the percentage rate, do you yeah. know? So as far as like numbers like that, I'm not sure, but it's super common that we'll start working with a business that has like, you know, negative reviews, terrible star rating, no, hardly any reviews to speak of on Google, and then, you know, after a year, year and a half, two years, they have like 300 positive reviews on Google. It takes that long. It takes that long. Okay. Yeah, it takes a little while. Um, and the reason why is we don't want like to get too many reviews too fast because, because it's that spammy. it looks un unauthentic to these review algorithms. So if I'm so Google is just a giant robot, and so if uh, if you have a local business, Google knows like okay, it's not normal for a dog, um, you know, hotel to get like 500 reviews in a month. It is normal between ten to fifteen positive reviews, so that we we try to stay in within you know what's what's regular. So you are like regulating how many get posted that month as well. Yeah, yeah, and we encourage like a certain amount of review invites to go off on a monthly basis, um, to ensure that our people get like ten to fifteen. So you've created month. your own algorithm as well. Then. I guess you could say that. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. It's kind of ironic because. I'm like the least tech guy in America. I'm not a technical wizard. But you created wizard. this whole technical program. I'm not a technical wizard, but I enjoy technology and, um, and uh, kind of had the vision for it and just, like you said, just went out and kind of did it like you're doing with Rebel Buddha, which I've been admiring what you're doing from afar. Thanks, man. So, yeah. No, it's really cool what you're doing. So that's what you have to do if you have a business. You have to like promote it and get it out there and add value to people and... You know, that's how we build stuff. That's, and so it's amazing that you didn't write the software. No, I did that's not so write amazing. the software. That's like some, like Steve Jobs style. Like you had the vision. Yeah. He got other people to do what he couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you just run it. Yeah. Which is a straight entrepreneur dream. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, considered a tech entrepreneur. So that's what I do. Wow. Yeah. And that's like, I would consider that to be the number one industry right now. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's super exciting, man. It's a, it's a really cool thing. And, and again, because you can start a business with not that much money and you can create a product and you can go and sell it and it's super hard. Super hard. Takes, so hard. <laughs> like so hard. Like you don't get me wrong. You think it's in the beginning. You think, oh yeah, the uh, first three months, oh, it's easy. And then dark, three months later, you're like, like, oh. Dark. No dark, one's buying anything. Dark, dark times. <laughs> dark times. But then if someone uh, buys something, you're like, no, I can do this. The highs and lows of entrepreneurship, you know. But, but it's I worth think, it. I think for the, for the right personal um, personality, it, it like, it's the only way to go. Like I could not imagine after all of my experiences over the last 10 years, like going and clocking in and being one of these guys I see at lunch spots with like little plastic like, 
you know, like, <laughs> zip, like the, you know, you've seen them, right? I, the, I can't imagine. The plastic thing. Yeah, with their, with their ID badge. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so thankful that I don't have to do anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I did that. That's like, that was like that one job. The first it job. Was, it was not fun. Not and fun. I think right now that there is more opportunity to be an entrepreneur and to do whatever you want to do, but it all relies on your hard work ethic and how much time you want to put into your brand, into your job, into your business. Yeah. But a lot of people just don't want to put in the time because mm -hmm. they have addiction problems to TV and media. Yeah, and it's like people, you know, they're not willing to like, it takes a lot of like crazy hard work and they're not willing to do it. And uh, I think one of the advantages when I got started was I didn't realize what I was doing. No, I, I was starting a software company without even realizing that's what really what I was doing. Do you have an app too? Um, what do you mean, like an app on your phone? Yeah. No, we don't have an app on our we just, people just log in. Okay. Yeah. Go Is to that any site. Then you don't need an app for it or anything? No. No. Unnecessary. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So do you feel that like I feel like skateboarders, they they all have this in inner drive that a lot of I guess regular people they don't like have this this drive of being that it's okay to be rejected and falling and getting hurt and getting back up do you feel that like skateboarding has allowed you to be a more successful entrepreneur if you didn't have that training as mm -hmm. a skater i think so for sure i mean in order to become like good at skating you have to go through years of falling and you have to become really good at falling like falling is an art form you know what i'm talking about oh, yeah. like every skate skater does and uh yeah, you just have to like, um, I think skaters make amazing entrepreneurs because they're independent. It's not like a team thing, you know, and it, you have to be sort of a self-starter to like do a, your own business. So yeah, I see the pattern over and over and over again with different guys that have like uh, a background in skating. It's cool. It is really cool to see yeah. what people do after skating is the most interesting thing yeah. to me. Yeah. Not, not like, I don't think skaters are interesting. But skaters don't become interesting until like when they're done with it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, now. I don't think you're done though. Oh, I'm totally done. I dude. think you're, totally you're, done. you're just, you're just like going through like a mini retirement. Okay. You know, you're doing a mini retirement, All right. thing, which is great. Thanks. So yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's well, when they're just, when they become older and they like have different outlets and they grow up, they become yeah. like the most interesting people. Like only, there's only a certain amount of time for like certain hobbies though, right? There is. There's yeah. only a certain time your body can do certain things. Yeah, unless you're Jim Bates, of course, and then it's maybe internal. if you just keep doing it <laughs> and you like don't take a break and you just keep jumping down stuff. Yeah. like maybe, maybe your body becomes immune. Yeah, if you Jim Bates it and it's just a permanent thing, then yeah, definitely. But then I see like people who, who like Hosoi and Hawk and stuff, and I'm like, how do they do that? I think yeah. skating is a whole nother world. The, the transition because you, yeah. you have like a knee like a knee you, slide you're never thing. like a, a tranny guy were you i mean i like mini ramps but i can't i've done a 50 50 on vert one time yeah when i was skating with uh yeah. lincoln ueda and current cables okay yeah. current cables i like that guy a lot really if i had it. a team i, I would call him up and i'd sign him immediately yeah yes he's like number one that guy's awesome oh my goodness what uh what other skaters are you into right you know now i like i like tori pugwell okay yeah yeah, he's a beast. He's the best, and and I'm really happy for him that he's. he's Did you also, guys grow up skating? Oh, yeah, I've seen you guys. Friends. Yeah, I've seen you guys. Like, I think I, he's been on the show, right? No, well, I've taught him yoga. I okay. teach him yoga. I haven't Got taught it. him in a while, but I'm really stoked yeah. that he's done Grizzly mm -hmm. for so long, yeah. and it started when he was like eight, I and know, now it's awesome. like it makes like three million dollars a year. It's crazy. And then he has his own brand, Thank You, which is so yeah. cool. So I think everyone should who doesn't have their own brand yeah should have their own brand and start making one because in 2022 and 2025 if you don't have your own personal brand you have nothing so you have to prepare for the future amen yeah yeah no i totally agree like like uh personal branding whether you want to or not are you a linkedin guy by the way i i just actually started it okay because gary v told me to 
that was like I mentioned, I saw Gary last week in New York, and right. that was all he was talking about. I don't understand. LinkedIn, Can LinkedIn, you tell LinkedIn. me about LinkedIn? Because I don't know Can't. how it will help me and so, my company. So LinkedIn just uh, it's just a way to like show up on a lot of different areas on LinkedIn. So if you his advice is wake up in the morning and do a hundred interactions on LinkedIn. So an interaction could be a like, it could be a comment, okay. it could be a post. And you can jam through that in like, you know, 30 to 60 minutes. And, um, you know, like get, like interact with different people that, you're, that you want to get involved with. People you've never met. Um, or people, people that you know. Okay. Um, or people that you'd like to know. But just people like in your space and do thoughtful comments and like just participate. And so if you do that, then LinkedIn will reward its users that are most active. And so if you're doing all these comments and stuff, every time I log in, I'm going to see, oh my gosh, Rebel Buddha is everywhere, you know? They're just like in the feed. Yeah. And Gary was saying, he's like, you know, so LinkedIn currently is like Facebook uh, was like 2010, 2010 right? It was just a, a lot cheaper to do ads, a lot easier to get exposure. And so... And it, people are looking at it? Grown ass dilfs are on that thing like freaking hawks which because they're trying to get new jobs like i don't i look <laughs> like, at it i'm like what I, is this i thing? look at so i look at my guys um that i know that are like savvy legit business people yeah. and i see them commenting and stuff and i know what they're doing they're, they're just they're just doing that to doing gary v. build their self to build their brand or push their product or you know um so yeah it's not necessarily a hobby thing it's like they're going on there to get exposure and work yeah you know, that's what another thing Gary talks about, Gary Vee. He goes, you have to have interaction on Instagram and Facebook. Like, there was a while, yeah, or last year, or like a year and a half ago, I unfollowed every single person on Instagram because mm -hmm. it was driving me insane. Like, I just look at the yeah. feed and be like, oh, it's so annoying. Like, oh, it's so annoying. Yeah. I might have to start following you again. I don't know if I have yet. Okay. Just, it's not it's not because I don't like you. It's <laughs> okay. because I took this like break yeah. for literally a year where I didn't look at any feed. It's necessary. And sometimes. I felt so much less anxiety. Hmm. Like today I was just looking at the feed and I like little things will just bug me. I'm like, why am I looking at this? Yeah. Like I, I try not to look at it as much as I can yeah. and only post my own stuff right. because I'm like a content creator, not a content mm -hmm. um, consumer. consumer. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing Terrence McKenna talks about. I don't know if you know Terrence McKenna. He's just like this psychedelic guru guy. He goes, okay. don't be a content consumer. Be a content creator. Yeah. There's no time to consume. Just keep making stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep making stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I need to get back on the... It was interesting, like just a few months ago when I launched Praise, I was doing like the content thing. And I found a content guy and we did some videos and... And I got, um, you know, people noticed it and people signed up with me and I made Just through money. Instagram and Facebook? Through, uh, yeah, so each day I would do a post um, on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Just one a day? Same do, post? Do one a day, the same post, but then I would have a, my content guy create like 30 different posts and then he would come to my house and we'd do like a little two hour shoot uh -huh. and then he would take those different videos of stuff we were talking about that relates to what I do and he um you know he broke them down into little like 30 second clips or whatever and they're and you then, talking and stuff yeah me and uh Eric Bork actually oh, talking okay. and and uh yeah it just makes oh, cool. for like good content and stuff for people to watch and the videos you know these videos that are like broken down in a little bite-sized piece so of people can content. just look at it for a second without having to listen for an hour yeah yeah, exactly. Awesome. And it's like just little things, little, you know, bits of value that you're, you know, creating for your audience. It gets people to, you know, have reason to follow you and continue to think about you. And then when they're ready, sign up, they, they pull the trigger. So yeah. how many clients do you think you've, you've got from Facebook and Instagram over the years? So that was, this is a huge, like one of the biggest mistakes I've made okay. is I wasn't active on social media. Because you didn't care or you didn't think it was going to help you? I didn't care. I kind of went the opposite way. I was like opposite day every day for like 10 years. <laughs> and now you're the, you switch. <laughs> I'm, I'm still doing both right now. Right okay. now it's just like, I, I'm just like everything, but I saw a lot of different competitors of mine, like going social and all this other stuff. And I thought like, well, if I can get through to the decision maker, then 
you know, one on one, and that was my sort of like so you my were, secret weapon. You were just trying to work in person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did, and that's kind of what I wanted to do for that business at that time. Um, right now, my goal with Praise is to like build something, you know, um, that I can that I can sell like in a couple of years. So I want to build it faster, bigger, put it in a box, sell it, move on to the next thing. And then what? what is your next project going to be? Or you got to keep that secret? No, um, I think I'll always do something in software and then I want to get into real estate and like I'm super into real estate and I love the idea of like fixing stuff up, holding it and renting it out. Totally. So, I mean, that's, that's what Robert, uh, Kiyosaki says yeah. is the number one thing because it's non-taxed. Yeah, it's just like it, again, it's that residual income. Totally. That I mean, why don't they teach us this in school? Why does no one talk about well, this? They don't. They don't know about it because they're teachers. So they right. did their their social studies. They did their book reports. They did their PE. They stretched it out. Yeah. And then uh, they are teachers now. And then it's like regurgitate the same same stuff. But I feel like this stuff was kept from us secret on purpose. Really? Yeah. Girls? Yeah, I feel like they, they like, <laughs> like, I'm like, why do they I just people... don't think they know. I guess so. I guess maybe it's just, it's just like esoteric stuff. Yeah. That you have to like dig, dig deep on YouTube to even like find these people. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like, um, you know, in order to like, what drives me is financial independence. I want cash flowing. I don't want to have to like wake up and like be afraid I can't like survive. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? And I, I want to work for myself. I want to have a good lifestyle and all that good stuff. And so financial independence just takes like getting different things like resi enough residual income to cover whatever your, your monthly expenses are. Expenses are. Yeah. If like teachers would have just told us that, like you said, when we were little kids, it's like that'd be a totally different like paradigm shift for kids growing up. I think it would be really healthy. Well, they're just trying to teach us how to be good workers. Yeah, they teach you exactly like the rich dad principle. It's right. like they teach you how to be a worker, worker bee. And that's it. Get the lunch pail, go to the office, sit in the cube. And, then go and for home. some people, that's awesome, by the way. And for well, some, some people, people, that's all. That's, that's some people they yeah. thrive in that environment, and it's they can't handle the but stuff that we're trying to do. But people who grew up skating and surfing and being little punk kids, like we can't yeah. do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. Ugh. Like I, I hear you. I mean, sometimes I do work till like last night or yesterday. I taught yoga four times: yeah. Malibu, Agora, Ventura, and Northridge. Like, so you way got a mobile studio. I'm going driving around to all the different LA fitnesses all over the place and all the different yoga studios, and I'm working till awesome eight to nine o'clock at night, mm -hmm. stretching it out. Yeah, just doing my thing over and over again. But then I see like sometimes like maybe I'll go somewhere and someone's working till like 10 o'clock at night, like maybe at a restaurant or something. Yeah. And I'm like, that sucks. Or like, that's how yeah. I feel. Yeah. But then like, they're just working. Yeah. They don't, it's not something like, it's I, like you're doing something where it's like, you're stoked to be doing it so much so that like you get lost in the time. Like, that's awesome. Like that's, that's kind of like my thing too. Like for me, I just blend it with my lifestyle and you know, I'm doing calls I'm I'm, you know, get jumping on the rebel Buddha podcast. I'm like going to go get some food with some friends. Yeah. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to be able to do that. To have the freedom. Yeah. Have the freedom to do that. The freedom. It's yeah. To not have to be locked in somewhere yeah. all the time. I can't totally. imagine. Yeah. Anything else you want to touch on? Uh, well, what's your plan, man? What are, you, what are you doing with the, with like, what's your ultimate goal with, with Rebel Buddha? I'm my curious ultimate goal, should I, should I spill the beans on, you, on what I want with Rebel with Buddha? Yeah, hit me with so it. So my goals for Rebel Buddha, I want them to be a, a yoga studio franchise. Hmm. Rebel Buddha Yoga. Okay. Like a, like core power yoga, like brand. but way cooler. Yeah, And uh, more real and more authentic and yeah. more traditional and classical. And I want them, I want it to be a brand more like, like Lululemon, mm -hmm. but like a punk rock version of Lululemon. So what I, mm. what I started Rebel Buddha is because I've been sponsored by Ezekiel, Hurley. I was sponsored by Ezekiel. Oh, no way. We've had, okay. we have Ezekiel ATM. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Combo. Um, this is a long time ago and Lululemon Crazy. and 
I've had all these like huge clothing companies, mm -hmm. sponsors, and yeah, wait, did you say you were sponsored by Lululemon? Yeah, but for mm -hmm. yoga. Oh. I had a yoga contract for two years in oh. 2014. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Which was really cool, and I'm thankful for them. But then when you're not sponsored anymore, yeah, and you're like, I don't want to just wear this boring white shirt or a gray shirt. Like I got bored of just wearing yeah. like crappy clothes. Or just like not crappy clothes, this but things be, that didn't yeah. feel like were me. Yeah. Because I've been sponsored my whole life, so I'm always wearing like something that I thought was cool, like whether it's a stereo shirt or yeah. something like that. Right. So to not have something to like represent or something, I'm like this didn't is, feel right. But yeah, I was bored. Didn't feel right. So I'm like, yeah. I need to sponsor myself. Oh yeah. That's so I, that's I turned right. myself pro. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rebel Buddha. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, but it's not. It's a, and I do have my own surf team. Yeah. With Groms that I yeah. sponsored at Zeros. Well, and the, the guy that does an amazing Donald impression. And, and, and uh, Tyler I'm, Allen. I'm not a surfer. Yeah. So I did, yeah. Tyler Allen. That, uh, that guy's should, hilarious. You should check out his Instagram. He's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Yeah, uh, I have. It's hilarious. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, totally. And then we, uh, we actually might add another pro, Ian Bryant, to the team uh, in the next week a or two. So. pro surfer? Yeah, he's pro Got surfer. We, okay. He still When am. are we going to expand to skate? The skate guys? Well, then I have to go out in the streets and start filming. Like, no. now I'm the filmer. No, man. You'll be mobile. Yeah. Then you just keep it mobile. Maybe if you want to send in your sponsor me tape to Rebel Buddha, you can. <laughs> but um, you got to be able to switch flip back tail. Okay. Uh, you can't just, like, be mediocre. That's a We're solid not just, maneuver. like, want, like, a crooked grind. We need, like, serious. This, okay. Like, yes. I was watching a video the other day on Crasher, and they just do a switch back tail shove. I'm like, dude, I've been doing that, switch like. Switch back tail. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, that's not good enough for me. No. Sorry. That was like 90, that was 95. Yeah, I, I need like, tell you. I need a switch flip in. Yeah, Anyways. For sure. Um, and then so, and then I was also thinking like every band mm -hmm. has like merchandise after every show. Yeah. And each yoga class is a show. It's okay. like my own punk rock yoga demo in yeah. a way, right? So I'm like, I need merchandise. So I created yeah. Rebel Buddha so that in, after each class, there's the merchandise on the table. And Makes sense. If people want to buy the clothes, yeah. they can. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm vibing on the red sweatshirt. You like the red sweatshirt? Yeah, big time. Thank you. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Is that a bestseller? I had sold a couple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Online sales are, are hard, but in person sales You're are much better. better. Just yeah. like you. Yeah, I get that. Just That's like good. You, isn't it? Don't you feel that like in-person in sales yeah. is 10 times easier than one online sale? Uh, I agree. Yeah. Why is yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I mean, for you specifically, you, you're dominating your show, and then people get stoked and obviously want to like be a part of it, you know? Not just watching from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you set up like the right online marketing, like I think eventually your online marketing is going to weigh overshadow your in-person stuff. Well, you know, I've been really working hard with like shooting the kids, wearing the clothes mm -hmm. and getting the models and stuff. Yeah. And then I was looking at some other brands that I was like some other skate brands that I've mm -hmm. heard about, some new brands. Yeah. And I was like checking out the website. And they didn't have any models wearing the clothes. It was just like a t-shirt on a blue background and like a, a deck and a blue background. Like yeah. what I've been, I've been working so hard getting yeah. the real people to wear it. So yeah, which I think it's paying off. Like from it, an outsider's perspective, watching the, watching the content is paying off. And it's, it's a lot of work, but it's really fun. It's yeah. hard in a new field. Yeah. I'm going to highly recommend, and this might be outside of Let's your uh, expertise, but um, can we get some, like, grown man, like, mountain biking tight apparel? Like Like, like this? a freaking kit. Like a mountain like biking that. outfit? Yeah. So would, you, would you rock it? Absolutely. So what do, you, what do you want me to make? Like, I would want you to make, they call it a kit. Okay. So it's like Google Rebel Buddha. Stuff. Yeah, so they call it... Um, so they call it a bib. It's like full bore, like, like wrestling looking singlet. Oh, it's a, it's a onesie. It's a onesie. Okay. And then the tights, and then you get the jersey. Okay. Over it. Are you a mountain biker now? I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's like my newest, newest hobby. Love mountain biking. I, I was mountain thinking, biking's awesome. I need to start you should, mountain biking. You should look into it. I think you would thrive. I, and I used love to, it. but I fell and I ripped my hand. None of this crazy aggressive stuff. Yeah. I'm talking, they call it cross country. Just, Just like cruising. We're cruising, we're climbing, going down a little bit, but we're not like, you know. Full face helmet? Uh, not the face helmet, just the dad. 
Okay. The freaking grown just like bicycle. The, yeah, the dilf helmet okay. with the man tights. Like yeah. we might have a like call. A, yeah, we yeah, might yeah, have like, a call. We need to jump on in twenty have minutes. A, type thing. A praise like it says praise <laughs> jersey. Like I do not yet. We can. I would love. You to. should make one. I. I you can go to Printful. Yeah. They make. You can make a jersey. Yeah. I'm. I need. Literally, it's on the list of to dos. I mean, you yeah. should be wearing a Printful. I mean, a a praise shirt all the time. Head to toe. Head to toe. Look at me, Rebel Buddha. Sure. Jeans even? Do you do Rebel Buddha jeans? You don't or? have jeans, but I have sweat, sweatpants. Okay. And sandals, and eyewear. And yeah, I, and I like maybe. the sandals. Those look cool, too. You know what? Yeah. Maybe uh, what's, I have a... You know what? You're yeah. going to get a free pair of sandals today no. for being on the show. Yeah? yeah. Let me. You know what? Let me Dude, go grab them for the, grab from the car so all the people on the show can see I would see be it really stoked quick. out of my mind. I have one size left. Okay. All right. I'll take it. You were just, seriously. Here you go. So these are the sandals. Dude. Thanks for being on the, the show. Universe, the universe knew I needed these. <laughs> you needed the flip flops. Thank you, man. These are great. Hey, appreciate that. Thanks for being on the show, Stuart. I really course. appreciate it. Good brother. So good Thank to catch up with you me. and hear Likewise. your story. And yeah. Boom. Boom. All right. Thanks for watching the show, you guys. Episode four complete.